بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على عبده ورسوله ومصطفاه نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن اهتدى بهدى السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and welcome to lessons in fiqh we're still studying the chapter that deals with times of prayer and the hadith we have has the number 134 hadith narrated by Rafi ibn Khadij and brother Nur will Read it for us. Narrated by Rafi bin Khadij, Allah's Messenger وسلم, said, Over the morning prayer at dawn, for it is greater for your reward. Offer the morning prayer at dawn, for it's greater for your rewards. One would say, Okay, then when do you want us to offer morning pr prayer? It's definitely offered at dawn. Scholars say th this hadith is not understood as some people have translated it, but it, it translates literally to asbihu subh which means that extend your fajr prayer until it's morning, until light has come. So it's not uh, uh, what uh, the translation has been translated to offer the morning prayer at dawn, because we can only offer morning prayer at Dawn. This is the time. So it has no meaning. But the actual meaning is prolong your Fajr prayer until it's light. Which means that when you pray at dawn, don't pray for five or ten minutes. No, extend your prayer until it's like half an hour. And this is the Sunnah. He used to pray, alayhi between 60 to 100 verses of the Quran in Fajr prayer. And this is the Sunnah of the Prophet. To begin Fajr early when it's dark and to end prayer when it's light and in one in incident uh, Abu Bakr may Allah be pleased with him prayed Al-Fajr and it was just before sunrise he finished he finished prayer just before sunrise and the companions his, follow his companions said Abu Bakr what was this you almost extended your prayer until it was sunrise so he said that if the sun rose, it wouldn't have found us sleepy. It would have found us praying. It would have found us praying. So this is a positive thing. It's not a negative thing. But the essential thing is when to, to begin your prayer. So if you, be, you start your prayer at the very beginning and you extend it until it's daytime, so there's no problem in that. And this is the doing of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam. Now, the four, the, the four schools of thought, Al-Imam Malik, Shafi'i, and Ahmad ibn Hanbal, think that it is the best to pray it early in the morning, just after dawn. Abu Hanifa prefers that it is delayed. And the majority's opinion is the correct verdict in accordance to the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Uh, the following hadith, Narrated Abu Huraira, radiallahu anhu, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, He who prays a rak'ah of the Fajr prayer before the sun rises has offered the dawn prayer in its time. And he who prays a rak'ah of the Asr prayer before the sun sets has offered the afternoon prayer. Okay, there's another Muslim version reported, for Muslim. Yeah, another version reported by Muslim. He said the same above hadith narrated by Aisha, radiallahu anha, who narrated sajda prostration, sajda. Sajda. Sajda prostration instead of raka'ah 
prayer unit. And then he, Muslim, said, a sajda implies a rak'ah. Okay. Now this hadith tells us that if a person succeeds in praying one rak'ah, or as in the version of Aisha, one sajda before sunset. Of course, what is the prayer before sunset, Noor? The prayer before sunset. Uh, it's praying sunnah, maybe? No. Zaki? Asr prayer. Asr oh. prayer. Okay, so watch out. So the hadith tells us that if you delay Asr prayer for one reason or the other, for example, if you sleep over it, or if you were engaged, or if you had something that was so urgent, and if you forgot, and you just remembered before sunset, and you managed to pray one rak'ah. So the Prophet says that you have succeeded in praying Asr in its time. It, 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 the time did not go. Though you finished the other three after the sun has set, but the, you're still, the Asr was done on time. Likewise, Fajr prayer. If you were engaged or delayed the prayer for one reason or the other, and you manage to pray one rak'ah before the sun rises, this also uh, uh, means that you have correctly prayed Fajr before the time ran out. Now, of course, this doesn't mean it's okay, but it tells us when it is not possible to be prayed afterwards. Why? I'll tell you why. Allah says that prayer has been timed. It was timed on us which means that we should pray on time because if we do not, then our prayer is invalid. Meaning, if I am sitting home watching a football match and the football match runs from Asr till after Maghrib and my wife says, come and pray Asr. And I say, shh, I'm watching the match. And I'm no, I know that the team will lose because this is inevitable. They will lose. Whatever I support someone and I'm not okay with Allah Azza wa Jal, we will all lose. So I insist on watching this game. And I watch the game and it's 10 minutes before sunset. The game goes on. It's two minutes before sunset. The game goes on. It's sunset. Then I realize and astaghfirullah, I have made a mistake. Let me go and pray. Can I pray Asr? No, I cannot. Why? Can't I make Adha? No, you cannot. Why? Because you've skipped the time. The Prophet ﷺ says, whoever sleeps of a prayer, over a prayer, or forgets it, then he must pray it as soon as he remembers. There is no way else for him to compensate for it other than this. So it is a must for you if you forget or you sleep. But if you deliberately abandon Salah until the following Salah comes, you may not pray it even if you pray it 10 times, it will not suffice and it's gone. Uh, Abu Malik has a question. Well, my question, uh, Sheikh, you just answered it. Well, I was going to ask if, if you know, anybody that leaves a prayer la at laziness, from laziness, they cannot, you know, they cannot commit qada for that prayer? No, they cannot. If they deliberately abandon prayer, they cannot pray it again. And Zaki has a question. When we can qada the prayer? You cannot. It's the, gone. There is qada in prayer? Qada is only when you sleep or you forget. Sometimes you're engaged in work, you know, you're typing and doing, and all of a sudden, whoa, it's an hour after prayer time. I, I didn't realize it. And Allah knows that you're saying the truth. It happens. I, it, I tell you the best example that happens all the time with those who are used to praying in masjids. If you have this sunnah in you and you pray all the five prayers in masjid, then you're programmed to pray only in masjid. But for example, if you go to the hospital and 
you're stuck. You know, the doctor is operating on you or doing something, and oh, you have to be there. And it's Maghrib time. Oh, okay, I'll, I'll try to wrap up. The doctor says, a couple of minutes more. And it finishes in half an hour. You leave the, 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 the hospital, and you go back home, and you go in, and you, you know, relieve yourself, change and sit down, waiting for Isha prayer. The Isha prayer calls, and you go to pray Isha. At 9, 10 o'clock, PM said, Whoa, I didn't pray Maghrib. You completely forgot. Why? Because you didn't pray it in the masjid. You completely forgot about it. So now you can pray it because you forgot sincerely. But if you leave it intentionally, it's not acceptable. I'll give you another example, though it's not our subject. Yet it's a little bit related to it. A person stands on Mount Arafat on which date? Mustafa. The Hajjah. Which date? Date. Which eighth uh, of Hajjah, tenth of Hajjah? Tenth. Tenth of Hajjah. Tenth of Hajjah. You guys Nine. should have a scholarship, and I'll <laughs> send you to Mecca for pilgrimage <laughs> on the account of uh, whoever you wish, but not me, definitely. On Fadi. The ninth. On the ninth. Ninth. The day of Arafah. The day of Arafah is on the ninth of Hajjah. Tenth is eight. Eight is the day of Tarwiyah. Okay, well, it happens to the best of us. Let's assume that someone comes to Arafah on the 9th and said, Whoa, all these people, it's crowded, I can't find any place to park my car. Tell you what, I'll come a couple of days later. He comes a couple of days later, there's no one in sight. He said, wow, now I can stay for the whole day in Arafah and then go to Mina. And Is this acceptable? No, because it's limited with the time. Allah has put a time frame. It begins here and it ends here. So if you come afterwards, goodbye. It doesn't count. Prayer is like that. If you don't pray within the time frame that was set by Allah Azza wa Jal, then your prayer is invalid. Well, I'll offer more soon. I'll do it. It's invalid. Okay, just I'll do it as qada. I'll, I'll just do it. It's not accepted. Don't do it. You don't have to do it. And this is the verdict or, or the choice of Ibn Taymiyyah, may Allah have mercy on his soul, and the, uh, also the verdict of Sheikh bin Baz and Ibn Ithaymeen, they all have said it on this controversial issue, and that is why I know that you have a lot of questions. I'll try to go through them as quick as possible. We have 60 seconds left. Go ahead. All right, um, all right right now somebody, not, you know, he left the prayer laziness. On purpose, what, you know, what does he do to make up for that prayer? If he skips prayer out of laziness, this is a major sin. It's one prayer. He just left Maghrib prayer. He didn't pray it until Isha prayer was called. And then he's sorry. What does he do? He repents to Allah, asks Allah for forgiveness, and prays voluntary prayer as much as possible to compensate. But still he has committed a major uh, uh, sin, I think, have you got 20 seconds? A surgeon is performing an operation and he cannot leave the operation and he, it starts b like f before the and ends after us. What does he do? Well, I'm afraid that we have to break. Uh, I'll answer your question, inshallah, right after the break. So stay tuned. <laughs> Back to the Prophet. Join Sheikh Amar in the program Back to the Prophet, wherein he teaches us practical lessons from the Prophet's life and how this can help us to overcome our challenges in the present. We talk about the life example of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, seeking guidance for ourselves. In the early days after the revelation of the Holy Quran, the Muslims were greatly persecuted, so much so that Quite a few Muslims had to leave Arabia and migrate to Africa to live among Ahl Kitab, Christian people who followed the Gospel of Christ. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Uh, before the break, Brother Fadi had a question. Can you repeat your question again, please? If a surgeon is performing an operation, and for instance, this operation is a lengthy operation, 
taking up to eight or ten hours, and he, he f the, the time of salat comes in, and he cannot perform it because he cannot leave the operation because there's a risk for the patient's life. So what does he do? I believe that this is a hypothetical question because usually in such long operations you would have three or four surgeons uh, next to you, operating with you, assisting you. Um, to be humorous, change your profession, but then this wouldn't pay because I know doctors charge a lot of, uh, of cash. Yet, th to answer your question, Allah says, Allah That fear Allah as possible as you can. So in this case, if a surgeon is unable to leave the, the operating theater because he's the only one operating and there's a risk that a Muslim or a human being, uh, uh, his life is in jeopardy, then this is an excuse for him to continue. But as I said, I believe that usually there are three or four other surgeons that would take care. It, and it's exactly like, uh, what, I tell you why it's hypo hypothetical. Now, during the eight or ten hours of surgery, what happens if the guy has to answer the call of nature? And he has really to go and answer the call of nature. He had bad Chinese food the day before, and, and his, his stomach is, you know, making noises and sounds. And definitely he's going to leave the uh, operating theater and go and answer the call of nature. So it's the same thing. Prayer does not take more than four to five minutes of your time. It refreshes your mind and concentration, makes you go back better than the way you left. Again, another question. No, but usually there's a professor. He's in charge of the operation. He has a first, second, and third, up to fourth assistant. He's the one who, the, he, if, he, if, he, if, the, if there's a call of nature for him, then he takes a break. But for instance, the fourth assistant doesn't have the, r the right to choose so. And he doesn't actually sometimes, sometimes and this, it's, it's sad, but sometimes they don't pray. Not all surgeons pray. So uh, if, if I'm, for instance, the fourth assistant, assistant, then assistant, then he does not allow us to, like, to leave unless the surgery is finished. Believe me, brother, whenever there's a will, there's a way. You can always talk to the professor, you can always talk to the physician, to the surgeons. Whenever there's a will, there's a way. And if it's a, it's a must, you've got to leave everything and go. So prayer does not cost uh, uh, much time. All what you have to do is alternate. Tell him that this guy takes my place for three, four, four minutes, and I'm back. Now, if, if things are as bad as you say, and there is no way you can leave, then there is a possibility that you join Dhuhr to Asr, whether precede Asr or delay Dhuhr. And you can jo join four raka and four raka. This is a permission. And if, you know, a uh, worse thing happens, and you cannot, and it's a matter of life and death, Islam tells you, you have to continue working, and this is a one shot every uh, a blue moon. It's not an everyday event that takes place, because if it's an everyday event, then you should change your profession seriously. But it ca happens once every six to eight months, maybe, because of the timing and, and, and of uh, uh, the situation uh, you are talking about. Coming back to the hadith, uh, before uh, us, this is an issue of a uh, difference between scholars. Now, to be able to pray the prayer on time, do I have to only make the bowing, the rukur, or do I have to finish the whole rakah, which is consisting of bowing and two prostrations and then standing up? Because when we hear Aisha says sajda, this means the whole thing. And raka'ah also can imply or mean only the bowing. It's not the full-fledged raka'ah. So what's the most authentic uh, uh, of all? The most authentic of all that Jum'ah prayer, congregation, Fajr, and Asr, all are caught, all are uh, 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 considered to be uh, made by catching one raka'ah, which is the bowing position, which means that if I go to the mosque in Friday, how many raka'ahs do we have in Friday, Rushdi? Pardon me? 
How many rakahs do we have on Friday prayer? Two rakahs. Two rakahs. So if I go to the mosque and the imam is bowing in the second rakah, if I say Allahu Akbar and I bow with him, this is considered to me as catching one rakah, which means after he finishes prayer, I can pray one other rakah and my prayer is considered to be Juma, Friday. But if he raises his head and says, Sami Allahu liman hamida, and I could not catch him, and I joined the prayer after he raised his head, then there's no Friday for me. I have to pray four rakah as Dhuhr prayer. Abu Malik. Sorry. Uh, I heard some people, I'm not sure if this is true or not, uh, they said that if you don't catch the Fatiha, they didn't catch the rakah. No, this is not true at all because. This, the Prophet ﷺ said that clearly. Whoever catches rukur, he catches the whole prayer. So if you, and the hadith of Abu Bakr also states that when he came to the masjid and they were all in the bowing position, in the rukur position. So as soon as he entered the masjid and saw them bowing, he said, Allahu Akbar and bowed. And walked while bowing until he reached the line and joined the congregation. So the Prophet, Prophet Islam, continued the prayer and after he finished, he said, who did that? And the Prophet had the ability to see what's behind him. And this is something miraculous only for the Prophet Islam, when he used to make the, the lines and rows, he say that keep straight lines because I see you from behind. I, I have the ability, of course, he doesn't have any cameras and he doesn't have any eyes, but Allah Azza wa show those praying behind him to him. As Allah would show him things that we cannot see. Not that he is, you know, a six million dollar man or whatever. No, no, he, the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam can see what Allah shows him. So after prayer has ended, he asked the Prophet sallam, who did this? So Abu Bakr said, I did it and I intended well. Because I couldn't bear walking while you were bowing. How could I stand straight while you were in the bowing position? So the Prophet says, salam, May Allah increase your carefulness for prayer and do not repeat that. Which meant that the rak'ah, if it was not acceptable because he did not recite the fatha, the Prophet would, would, would have told him, repeat it again because it's void. And this is one of the evidence that scholars use to say that Fat Fatiha is not a must for those praying behind the Imam. It's a, a, an issue of dispute. We will come to it, inshallah, later on. So uh, uh, now we understand that if we catch, if we uh, 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 join the Imam in Raqqa, this counts as one. If we join the Imam in the Rukur position, in the bowing position, this counts as what, Zaki? Uh, this. Hey, this, this counts as a raka, raka. a raka. full fledged raka, which entitles us to uh, uh, continue the prayer with uh, the Imam and it's accepted as a congregation prayer. The following hadith, number 136. Narrated by Abu Sa'id al Khudri, may Allah be pleased with him. I heard Allah's Messenger وسلم, saying, no salat, meaning prayer, is to be offered after the morning prayer until the sun rises, or after the afternoon prayer until the sun sets. In another version of Muslim, there is no salat, meaning prayer, after the fajr, meaning morning, morning, meaning morn, morning prayer. Uqb ibn Amr, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated, there are three times at which Allah's Messenger وسلم, used to forbid us to pray, or bury our dead. When the sun begins to rise till it's fully up, when the sun is at its height at midday till it passes the meridian, and when the sun draws near to setting till it sets. Okay. Now in this hadith, the Prophet wasallam tells us about the times that we should not pray in. Let us get things straight up. We should not pray voluntary prayer but obligatory prayer there are no times for you not to pray them so th get this straight I get people saying that 
oops, I forgot to pray Dhuhr. And it's 4 o'clock or 5 o'clock in the afternoon. This is a time where we denied to pray. So I have to wait until it's sunset. Would, is this acceptable? You may pray the five obligatory prayer any time of the day or night. There are no restrictions to that. Of course, providing that you did not leave them because of laziness, yes. you left them because of forgetfulness or of sleep. So this is the first uh, uh, part or issue that we should always uh, pay attention to. Fadi. And uh, also if we're perform performing Umrah, and there's two rakat we're supposed to do after tawaf. If they come in the forbidden time, we're also supposed to pray them, right? Well, th this is what we are supposed to uh, go through after a while. And the same hadith is, is mentioned here. Oh. But uh, what I'm talking about, there are certain times during the day when it's forbidden for us to pray. This rhymes, huh? There are certain times in the day when it's forbid forbidden for us to pray. And here, in the first hadith of Abu Sa'id, it's mentioned two times. And the hadith of Uqba bin Amr, there are three times. So all in all, there are five times in the day. Two times that are general and wide, and three times that are specific and short. So the wide times are right after Asr prayer until the sun sets. The second one is right after Fajr prayer until the sun rises a, a, a little bit, which is about 10 minutes after sun rise to 15 minutes. So these are two times. They are general. They are about three, four hours uh, uh, long, maybe less, a little bit less. The three times mentioned in Uqba ibn Amr's hadith are very specific. That is, when the sun starts to disappear or when the sun starts to rise. So this is a span of five to ten minutes. And the last time, uh, the fifth time, that is when the sun is exactly in the center of the sky. When things don't have any shadow at all, this is the time that it is completely forbidden for us to pray. Five times, we need more time to explain this. Unfortunately, this is all the time we have for today's program. So until we meet next time, fi amanillah, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Oh. Uh -huh.